Hi, Carl Winkler here at Electrosonics, and we're at AES 2022, first live AES since uh, 2019, so it's been three years, and it's been a great show so far. I want to thank uh, Peter and Gotham for the, coming by for a live interview, so thanks guys, always great to see you. Uh, so what we're showing that's new at the show is the M2RA receiver. Uh, this is part of our Duet system and part of the whole D-squared line that we've been uh, coming out with for the past about four or five years. And uh, there's a couple Im important improvements in the M2RA, including the radio front end is designed for the modern world, uh, so it's a much more robust radio front end. It has a new power supply, and the audio is improved even over the original uh, in the same form factor, so with the same battery life as before. So this is a, you know, a real nice upgrade for any tough RF environments. Uh, we're talking about an extremely uh, miniature receiver here. And one of the great new features involved with this, though, is it now does the D2 and the HDM mono modes, as well as the duet and the, H, uh, the, the uh, encrypted stereo modes, as well as IFB, FM analog. So incredibly flexible, little receiver. Fidelity using the stereo digital modes is, is just wowing everybody, everyone who's put on the headphones. You know, I see the raised eyebrows. <laughs> and so we're having a good time with that. And I mentioned, you know, it's part of the D squared line. It's still using the M2T transmitter, which is our dual stereo rack unit with Dante or analog inputs. And, uh, you know, you can get, uh, with two of these, you have four stereo transmissions in a single rack space, which is fantastic. And, of course, it's part of the uh, wireless designer ecosystem as well. So we've got it set up here with a duet transmitter uh, sending out a stereo signal and we've got it hooked up to a DSQD, uh, which you see I've got stereo left and stereo right in duet mode coming through the DSQD. So it's part of the whole Electrosonics digital ecosystem, which is uh, unique out there and incredibly flexible and powerful. And of course, we're showing our latest digital slot receivers, uh, the DSR dual channel unit and the DSR4 uh, dual uh, quad channel unit. And here again, I'm picking up two channels from the duet transmitter duet left and right, and I've left uh, channels three and four open on the DSR-4. So we've got, got a lot of excitement here, a lot of people coming by to see the latest stuff, and it's always great to, to show them the equipment and, and have them listen. So it's been a, a great AES show so far, and uh, wonder if there's any questions from anyone who's tuning in. No uh, questions at the minute. Any, any, uh, any questions, Jared? No questions at the minute. Okay. Um, I, I have a question. Will there be, um, are you guys considering like a long range or higher latency IFB mode? Is that ever something that you would think about? Um, not that I've really thought about too much, um, uh, but we've extended the range of our digital system recently with some hardware updates. So I think if people try this system now, particularly with the M2RA and uh, the, the latest uh, M2T, uh, they're going to be very surprised at the range that they can get with this system. What, what does that mean, the latest M2T? Uh, there's been some, you know, we're always improving our products. So there was some recent changes to uh, some of the components in the M2T, relatively minor component changes, but they've made a big difference in the clarity of the digital signal. Uh, so again, you know, with an improved receiver and a improved clarity of transmission, uh, the range of these, you know, Blair walked this one to the end of this, this hall here earlier today, and you can imagine all the RF noise. It's Manhattan, it's Javits Center, but there's also a lot of exhibitors with wireless. So uh, he said not a single dropout to the end of the aisle. It's pretty good. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, well, if there's no questions. Um, I do have a question. A uh, second to look at the questions. Sure. Uh, Larry Long questions? wonders, Great. is there going to be a USB connection for the DSR-4? Larry Long wonders, is there going to be a DSR connection, a USB connection for the DSR-4? Yes, it has one. Uh, it's actually, it's here, right on the under the front panel. There's your USB connection. There will also be an accessory back panel with a USB connection that's not out yet. And so what functionality will that bring? Uh, it'll bring connection to wireless designer. 
That's the main functionality of the USB connection. But yeah, it's on the product now. So I'm not sure if it'll have USB or uh, wireless designer connectivity when the product first ships, but as soon as we can integrate it, kind of like what we did with the A22, is the product shipped and then we issued a firmware update that, that brought in the connectivity with wireless designers. So that may be the case. Depends on how much time the coders have between now and when we ship, so. But that's, that's in the plan. It was in the plan from the beginning. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, I have a question. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about just in terms of how Electro has been coping with supply chain shortages and, and all, yeah. the, all the other issues? Now the question is about uh, supply chain shortages and how we've been coping with it. Uh, as most people know, it's been a real big challenge in the past year, year and a half, even two years, depending. Um, so we've coped with it by putting tons of design resources towards uh, redesigning uh, 17, I think, of our products for a new family of FPGA chips. And so that's quite burdensome, but we're through that now. We've actually redesigned nearly everything. Uh, we're in full manufacturing right now with every product. Some products have some deep back orders because of unavailability, including this one. Uh, combination of popularity and unavailability for a few months uh, makes for back orders. But um, we're through the worst of that now and in full delivery. So the, the main products in our line are uh, available now and in, in stock. DSQD, which was not available for a while, available now. Uh, the 822, very popular receiver, available now. Uh, the digital transmitters, with very few exceptions, available. So, uh, I think we fared better than most uh, in terms of getting through the supply chain problems. Awesome. Uh, Jared, any, any other questions before we sign off? Uh, yes, actually, a couple more. Benjamin Call would like to know if you can update an M2R to an M2RA a with a board update. A couple more questions, great, okay. Uh, is there any upgrade path between an M2R and an M2RA? That's a great question. Right, question about the upgrade path from M2R to M2RA. Unfortunately, because the, both boards have been redesigned and we had to do a little bit of retooling on the case, on the interior of the case, um, it's, it's all new. There's, there's no common components, no boards between the two, unfortunately. So if you've got an M2R that's been damaged beyond repair, for instance, we have a repair exchange program. Uh, but it's not economical to change out the boards and, and the housing. It's basically a new unit, so. We, we did wish it was possible to do that, but it didn't turn out that way. Got it. Um, any other questions, Joe? Uh, one more from Benjamin. Uh, will the DSR4 for other uh, with new slot plate work in Octopack in AES for 16 channel out of an Octopack via AES? With the new, uh, okay. DSR4 question, okay. Uh, so with the new slot plate, will the DSR4 uh, work in an Octopack in, with AES? Uh, yes, it will. So there's a, a new bottom plate for the DSR4 that's going to be called the uh, DSR4 Super, and that provides the 25 pin connector for the Super Slot uh, interface, which the Octopack has. And when you set the output of the receivers to AES, you're getting all four audio channels out through two AES balanced pairs, and those will come through the Octopack. The Octopack's an analog only, but in, in it's got eight outputs, and each one of those is going to be an AES pair. So in terms of the Octopack, it's sort of transparent. It doesn't know what you're sending through its, its circuits. So you would be able to send those AES stereo pairs or two-channel pairs right through the Octopack. So that's how that works. Um, it should be pretty straightforward. Awesome. All right. Anything else? That's it. Thanks, Carl. Checking for further questions. These are great questions, guys. Thanks for asking, and I'm happy to answer. Yeah, no, that, and that's it. Those are, those are all the questions. Very good. Excellent. Once again, Carl Winkler here at Electrosonics. We're at AES Live 2022 at Javits Center, New York. And thank you again to Peter and the Gotham team for uh, putting on this uh, live interview. Thank you very much, Carl. Take care. And you are off. <laughs>